Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today I thought we would go back to the interview that was done by Kirill Udintsev with the site MMORPG.com and the reason why we're doing that is to talk about one of the vehicles which was well talked about there. Obviously this uh, interview was kind of interesting because it didn't just talk about certain issues that the game has right now, it also talked about future contents that will be coming in the future for War Thunder. And what is cool about that is it means that uh, we can explore these vehicles and also explore the options which they may bring along once they are added to the game. If you don't know, in this interview it was talked about how we're going to get different helicopter trees in 2020, stuff like Italian naval uh, machines which we'll look at in another video and also this machine that you see before you, which is of course the IKV-72. Now for some reason, uh, in, the, uh, in the actual uh, piece itself, this is actually labelled as the IKV-91, and they finally did actually change it, uh, so it is labelled the IKV-72 instead, because, well, that's what it is. And in this video, we're going to go through the history of it, we're going to go through uh, maybe a bit of its use in-game, and overall, what it kind of stands for, and what vehicles we could see because of this announcement from the Swedish Grand Tech Tree. So the first thing to understand is when we start looking at its history, uh, it starts off post-World War II. You may look at this vehicle and think, well, this kind of looks like a World War II vehicle. Uh, I mean, it's more of a 1950s vehicle if we look at its history. The story starts in 1949 when the Swedish were looking to build upon the fact uh, that they wanted some new ideas to be able to reinvigorate what would be seen as assault guns at the time. Stuff such as mechanized direct fire supports for infantry. So before this, before 1949, the Swedish had to depend on artillery guns in the form of towed uh, guns. So they didn't really have anything which was on a platform which could be mobile. Instead, it was just towed infantry guns. If you want examples of these, the first one would be the Bofors M34-105, which you can see here. This was around in the time of World War II for the Swedish. Then you have machines such as this one, which you may be familiar with. This is, of course, the German 105mm uh, that they use, the howitzer, and then also other guns, uh, such as this one, which is a 105 that the Swedish used, uh, the Horvitz M40. So there were a bunch of towed guns that were used by the Swedish and also used around at the time by other countries, and they were incredibly popular. But as we go along in history, stuff becomes much more mechanized, it becomes much more motor, it basically becomes a lot faster, and that's what the Swedish were trying to do. They were trying to stay away from that towed infantry gun idea and replace it with a mechanized option. Now, the problem with doing this is it's actually really economical to have towed infantry guns. Generally, moving them around the place is a lot easier to do than something like a tank destroyer or a tank. So they had to come up with a solution which would be cheap and efficient to be able to replace uh, the infantry towed guns, which, you know, would make sense. So they came up with some criteria. The criteria itself was it had to be a lightweight design, it had to be easy, to be produced on the same level as something like the towed infantry guns and also it shouldn't be no heavier than six tons and be made out of readily available parts uh, so therefore it was going to be a machine uh, which would be uh, one of those uh, which was you know really really simple uh, in, a, in that way so then the Landsverk company uh, responded with a scale model and also some drawings of what uh, they wanted it to be and it's this machine here so these are the scale models of what would eventually become the IKV 72 now these scale models are hilarious to me but uh, you know every project starts somewhere and eventually that turned into an idea which uh, was this machine this is the production version of the IKV 72 so 
after uh, the scale model uh, was created, there was an initial version uh, of this machine which was built and, or sorry, which was designed, and this was going to hold a crew of three and it was going to weigh six tons. Now, uh, in the preliminary designs, it had no guns, uh, it had no radio, so none of these weight uh, thoughts were really brought into it. Instead, um, they continued with the idea. The vehicle eventually came about, the superstructure was redesigned, and the crew itself was increased to four. Then the main armament idea came around, and there was basically three options uh, that were available to the Swedish at the time. The three options, you had a 75mm, which was used on the Stritzwagen uh, M42. If you don't know what the Stritzwagen M42 is, uh, it is this machine that you see right here. Probably one of those which is going to be a staple of the Swedish ground tech tree when it gets added in. It's a beautiful machine, and obviously, as you can see, kind of similar in the... Uh, the shape is something like a Panzer 38T. If you're used to that, it's probably the comparison I would make right now when it comes to the game. And then you had some other options. So there was a newly built 84mm gun and also uh, the 105mm M40 howitzer, which is of course this one that we talked about before. Unfortunately, this was the only picture I could get, so I apologize, it's a little bit pixelated. So out of these options, the 84mm was actually the one that they wanted to do, but the problem was they needed to actually develop the gun. Now, the gun was only in its design stage at the, at the time, so therefore they decided that the initial prototypes and also the first few production runs would have the 75mm, probably because it was just more efficient and also more economical. So by the end of 1949, uh, they had the design worked out, uh, they had the production uh, preparation sorted, and this meant they eventually constructed a prototype. But weirdly enough, even though the first prototype was uh, supposed to be, you know, a scale uh, proper done up, uh, you know, version of it, it didn't house the 75mm gun. Instead, it actually housed three 8mm machine guns, uh, which is found right here. So, for some reason, uh, they went back to three 8mm machine guns, and this was finished early uh, 1950. So, eventually, uh, obviously, it was seen as this was supposed to be an infantry support vehicle which was designed either with a 75 and 80 uh, and 84 or 105 they took away the three guns uh, the three eight millimeters and uh, re refitted the 75 millimeter to the chassis this created uh, this machine here, which is the rearmed prototype of the first uh, batch. Now, this rearmed prototype, uh, it had a 105 horsepower engine uh, on it, and also it had access to the 75 millimeter gun, which, as we talked about, was from the Stritzwagen M42, even though it looks slightly different. The uh, it also increased uh, its weight, so it went up to 6.5 tons. But because it was very light, still six. 6.5 tons at the time was incredibly light for a machine, especially one with a 75 millimeter. It's uh, with the 105 horsepower engine, it had a massive 17 horsepower per ton ratio and also a 60 kilometers per hour top speed. So this was a fast machine, it was a powerful machine, but its armor was severely lacking uh, because of the weight restrictions. Overall, the armor itself only was 19 millimeters on the upper front plate and only 7 millimeters on the side and 5 millimeters at the rear. So this is incredibly thin armor. We're talking about 50 cal uh, penetrating this armor so easily. It also had an open top, which is something that we see from the machine uh, right here. And so, yeah. It's, uh, it had the gun, it had the speed, the armor was severely lacking even against stuff like machine guns. So what they did 
is uh, they looked at it and looked at its positives. Another positive that it has, uh, or had, sorry, was the fact that it had a negative 25 degrees worth of uh, gun depression. You can see that right here. It's actually one of the only vehicles uh, that I've personally seen that has more gun depression than gun elevation. It has 25 degrees worth of gun depression and 20 degrees worth of gun elevation, which is incredibly impressive for it. And the gun traverse as well with the 75 millimeter was about uh, either 5 to 10 degrees of traverse to each side. So after they created this uh, final prototype they decided to finally push on uh, with it and create the first main production sets of these uh, machines which you can see right here. Uh, the general differences between the first prototypes or the after the test of the prototypes to the main production is there was a slightly reworked hull with a larger crew compartment so it was a lot nicer for the crew. They also upgraded the engine to 145 horsepower Ford V8 engine and the vehicle uh, became heavier because of this and also because of the uh, additions to the crew such as a better radio Video, so on and so forth. So eight tons uh, was the overall weight. Remember they started off wanting a six ton vehicle which is insane when you think about it but eight tons is still incredibly light for a vehicle of this stature but the power to rate uh, weight because of this increased engine power went up to 18 horsepower per ton and the top speed stayed close to 60 but not 60 at 57 kilometers per hour. So in 1953 uh, so this is three years after the initial prototype, the vehicle was ordered into production. 36 vehicles uh, were built within the following year and the armament of the vehicle was not seen as good enough. Uh, they still wanted a better assault gun uh, which would have a larger caliber round uh, attached to it for infantry support. So instead of the 75mm which was found you know, on the Stritzwagen, they wanted to go bigger. So. A 105mm was one uh, that was seen to do the job. So they took the ideas uh, from this uh, IKV-72 and they created what is known as the IKV-102 on top. Uh, of it and the IKV 102 which you can see here is a slightly better picture of it uh, is a simple idea what they basically did is they took the 105 millimeter Halbem 40 which was one of the guns we showed before and put it onto the IKV 72 and this was done between uh, 1956 and 1958 all of the IKV 72s were rebuilt with a new roof and other improvements and all also fitted the gun. So they didn't create a completely new vehicle, instead what they did is they just uh, added a roof, they added a few uh, extra little bits to it, uh, including you know some changes to the engine, but the main thing was of course the 105mm that you see on the front of this machine. A, another thing to also talk about is look at the air intake. Uh, so this bit is the air intake for the engine on the back and uh, you can see that it is in such a very odd place uh, compared to a lot of machines being on the rear of the superstructure. Another thing to also mention is uh, this machine was rear wheel drive, uh, something which was a little bit odd compared to a bunch of other Swedish vehicles and also with the engine in the booty. Uh, another thing to talk about with the 102 is it actually served until the mid 70s when it was actually replaced with the IKV 91 which was uh, the vehicle that we talked about you know the other week uh, which I'm sure when it's announced we'll go into its history and stuff like that but that's obviously a, <laughs> a different video for a different day. The other uh, idea as well that was built off uh, the IKV-102, which was just, as we talked about, basically a 72 with a 105 and a uh, roof, was this one. Uh, this is the IKV-103. Now, the IKV-103, there's actually one which still runs, uh, which is really nice to see, but what they did is they added a four-cylinder boxer engine uh, from the Swedish aircraft engine in Trollhattan, and the IKV-103 
was uh, built in the early 1980s and assigned to two groups. Uh, so this was just a better version, uh, more powerful when it comes to its engine version of the 102. So it's very similar uh, to the 102 that we see. So yeah, uh, that is the basic history uh, of this really interesting machine. And when it comes to game, it should be pretty fast. Uh, it should have a decent gun on it. Penetration uh, might be a bit of an issue depending on what BR it goes on. And when it comes to its, uh, when it comes to its survivability, it's going to be non-existent. I would see this as very similar to other machines like the Stu 42, but with a little bit less armor and a little bit more speed. I would probably liken it mostly to the Semavente 105, uh, but with a boosted engine. So, yeah, it, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, obviously, tank destroyers don't get a great name in War Thunder, mainly because of the fact that they don't have a turret and they have a lot of limitations, but hopefully the engine power that we find from this machine will be able to go past that and will be able to deal with a lot of the inadequacies that a bunch of other tank destroyers have in the game. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Ambrosius McClellan, B. Young, Blackie, Daniel Stanton, J. Wilt, John Ryman, Joseph Anders, Martinez, Moxie, Super Cacti, Uyens Terry, Elove Goat, and Seductive Trashcan for supporting the channel.